welcome to This is Bipsy. I am your host, Rose Carmody. Today we'll be getting an inside look at becoming a paramedic. Our guest today is joining us from the Division of Science, Nursing, and Elite Health. Please welcome our special guest, Jeff Anderson. Thanks for having me. Thank, I want to start off by thanking you for your time today. Absolutely. So I have a series of questions for you. And one of them is, for our guests at home, how do they find out more about the paramedic program? Well, the easiest way is to give me a call. Uh, I'm the program director over there, so I'm the advisor for most of the students. I have a, a couple of faculty that work with me also, so they can email us or call us. The program does have a website. Uh, if you just Google Bipsy Paramedic Program, uh, you'll be able to, to find out information there. So uh, whichever way uh, uh, works for you, there's a lot of information out there for them. All right. So can you tell us exactly what the paramedic program is? I have also heard the term EMT. Are those the same? They're not. Uh, they're both levels of pre-hospital professional. You have emergency medical responder, emergency medical technician, EMT, advanced emergency medical technician, and then paramedic. Paramedic is the highest level of responder out in the, in the EMS community. EMT, we also offer at BIPSI. It's a one semester class, about 160, 170 hours. Uh, they work with paramedics, they work for the fire departments, they work for the ambulance services, and then paramedic is a, a longer program, about two years altogether. Oh, wow. Okay, so what is the average timeline to complete the paramedic program? So for paramedic, we offer an associate degree and a certificate of technical studies. So the certificate is you have one semester of anatomy and physiology you take, and then the paramedic program is four semesters after that. Okay. And then if you get the associate degree, there's a couple of semesters of general education classes in addition. Oh, okay. So if I was to start the paramedic program, can you provide the average current cost per semester? Well, it's, uh, we have two full-time semesters in the program and then two part-time semesters. So it's the standard tuition. There's a few extra fees, but uh, so a standard uh, semester tuition for the fall and the spring. And so uh, it, the whole program ends up being about $7,000 oh. by the time you've taken everything. Okay, so if my finances are a little tight, is there any way you could still get started in the program? Absolutely. We're, we're fully accredited through the school, uh, so uh, financial aid applies to us, uh, scholarships. There's a lot of different funding sources, just as there are for all BIPSI students, they can apply for our program too. In addition, uh, some employers will, will offer scholarships, or if you're an EMT and you're working for them, sometimes they'll pay for you to go to school uh, in, in addition to working. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like many of the medical professions, do paramedics paramedics do clinicals during their schooling here at Bipsy? We do. Yeah, all all healthcare professions need practical experience as well as the book knowledge, and so uh, our students go out into the field and they work on ambulances with working paramedics. We also send them to the hospitals to work with various units in the hospital, like the emergency department, the ICU, respiratory. They go to the obstetric unit to to learn about delivering babies because that's something we do occasionally. Uh, so there's a pretty extensive program of clinicals and field shifts they do in addition to the schoolwork. Oh yeah, so they're everywhere. They are, yeah, sure. they are. Right. Well, in addition to clinicals and the regular book studies, do the students have any unique classes or equipment they get to work with during their time here? Yeah, all of our classes have a lab in addition to a lecture part. And so in the lab, we have various, uh, we have an ambulance simulator in there. We have uh, human patient simulators. We have every piece of equipment they would see in the field, and then we have task trainers where they can use that equipment to practice. So we never send somebody out to do something on a person that they haven't proven they can do on a mannequin or a task trainer before that. Oh, that's really cool. All right, so if I know the vaccines have been on everyone's mind. Absolutely. Um, maybe you can give us some more info. Most medical professions have a list they must get to even start working at the clinics or work in these professions. Mm -hmm. Do the paramedic program require these as well? Yes, uh, we, the program itself doesn't actually require anything. What we do is because we go to clinicals, we get lists from each of the hospitals as to what their requirements are. And then we have a program coordinator in the, the Division of Science, Nursing and Allied Health that merges those lists together. And so our students have to get the whole list. Uh, just like nursing, respiratory, medical assistant, all of the other clinical programs were all, it's kind of driven by what the hospitals require. Okay, that makes sense. So if I wanted to get started with the classes, are there any restrictions to the program? Oh, well, you have to have anatomy and physiology to get into the paramedic program. And if you want to start the EMT program, you can do that right away. Um, then you have, to, you have to take AMP 1 and 2 to get into the paramedic program. So what age is... 
Uh, there's there's no specific age for the program. Uh, the, the big requirement, there's two requirements when it comes to age. Number one is when will they issue you a license? Mm -hmm. And then for us, since we're kind of a transportation related industry, for a lot of us, when can you drive? So sometimes an ambulance service won't be able to hire you as an EMT to drive until you're over a certain age because of their insurance. Mm -hmm. But as far as getting the license, uh, 18 is usually the, the, the number. <laughs> so great, I am old enough you to are? get in. So where do I get started? Uh, you get admitted to Bipsy as a student, and then uh, you come talk to me or one of the other advisors, and we can we can chart a course and set you up. One of the things that's different about our program that's similar to other healthcare programs is you start and finish as a cohort. So you don't just take classes just whenever you want. You have to get admitted to the program, and then you start and finish as a group. Oh. And so there are certain, like we only start every spring right now, so if you wanted to do paramedic, you'd have to have your A&P done before the class started in the spring. Okay, nice, yeah. So once I've completed a missions, will I get to meet with you and get advice on classes? Absolutely, you can do that before too. Uh, you know, our, our numbers are posted, so anybody that has questions about the program before they start the admissions process, we'd love to talk to them. Jeff, those have been some great answers, and hopefully some of the viewers will want to take the first step in becoming a paramedic. We are now going to go to a break, and we'll come back to hear more. Nursing is a career, it's not a job. It's a passion. It's an art and a science. Yes, you want to go to Bipsy. <laughs> your career, your future, your aspirations. Bipsy's healthcare programs make them a reality. Bipsy changes students' lives by opening doors to them so that they can see their future and they can have the qualifications to go out and uh, become whatever they're able to become. It's the best thing that I could have ever done. Hands-on, lifelike scenarios, labs and training. Bossier Parish Community College offers all of this and more. The Sim Lab, it's really great. I didn't know that that no other school had it. Yeah, we have an ambulance, we have simulators, we have task trainers, basically any piece of equipment that a student might see in the field. With a 100% pass rate on certification and licensure exam, and most importantly, 100% employment rate for Allied Health graduates, Bipsy trains with state-of-the-art hospital simulations and EMT emergencies. We always want them to check off a skill in lab on plastic before they do it in real life. We have respiratory therapy, occupational therapy assistance, physical therapy assistants, nursing students, LPN to RN nursing students, they all come through the simulation lab. We have one of the best sim labs in the state. From cutting edge lab techniques to personal training with a 10 to 1 student teacher ratio, Bossier Parish Community College gives you practical knowledge with the latest teaching technology, innovation and inspiration for your career and for your future. With more than 14 programs in the healthcare industry, you can start your path to a healthcare career at Bossier Parish Community College. The Bibsy Paramedic Program prepared me to go out and lives in the community. These students are getting out making 80, 90, 100,000 a year. Turn your passion for helping people into a career in healthcare. Bossier Parish Community College's experience, training, and knowledge will help make your dreams a reality. We're the front line of the healthcare in the EMS profession, EMTs and paramedics. I have gotten phone calls from nurses that I've worked with in the past, and they say, Terry, your nursing students are some of the best we've ever had. Bips is kind of the best. It starts with you here at Bossier Parish Community College. Go where you feel like you need to go, but Bipsy's a place where you need to be. Yeah, 
It's only for the gonna be got cool professors. Master your craft with ease. Cool professors, master your craft with ease. Welcome back to This is Bipsy. If you're just now joining us, my name is Rose Carmody, and this is Jeff Anderson. Before the break, we found out what Bipsy has to offer if you want to become a paramedic. So now, I want to find out a little more about you and how you got into this field. It is a long and tragic story. <laughs> so how long have you been a paramedic? I've been a paramedic 20 years. Oh, wow. Did you always know that this was a field you're headed to or wanted to become something else when you were a kid? Actually, a little bit, yes. Um, I, I had several other career ambitions along the way, but when I was a child, there was a TV show called Emergency that was from the 70s that was about paramedics in Los Angeles, some of the first paramedics in the country. And I was a big fan of Emergency, saw it every time I could. And that was before cable, so you know, it was, wasn't on that often. But, yeah. And so uh, my fifth or sixth birthday, they actually made me a cake with the fire hat from that fire station. Oh, that's so cute. And so I've been wanting to do this for a while. And then when I was 14, I took a lifeguard training class when I was a scout camp counselor. And I was a lifeguard all through high school. So the whole first responder thing, it just kind of grew on me. And then uh, later on, when I was in college at Tech, I got a business degree at Tech in addition to doing my EMT and paramedic training. And so I uh, just started, I worked my way through college as a paramedic and stay, stuck with it. So pretty much your whole life. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of funny. I've always wanted to be a teacher too, because my father was a professor at Tech in engineering and my mother was a professor also at another school when they met. And so it was kind of tool, dual tracks. I always kind of wanted to teach and I always wanted to be a paramedic. And so now I found a way to do both here at Bipsy. Oh, that's great. So other than that, is there any other thing that made you want to be a teacher here at Bipsy? Well, at the time, uh, we were the only paramedic program in the area. Our profession is transitioning from having in-house paramedic classes at various fire departments and ambulance services to having college-based programs like we have here. And so the program I went to was at Delta Washita in West Monroe, which is now Louisiana Delta Community College. Oh, okay. And so they would do a class every now and then, but it wasn't consistent. Bipsy had the only consistent paramedic program for several years. And so when a job came open here, I applied and I got hired. Oh, well, that's great. That's really great. So do you enjoy teaching or being in the field? Both. I do. The, my, my job has three components. I'm in the field, I teach, and then I do administration. I don't like the administration <laughs> as the program director, but the field I enjoy a lot. Um, I work on the weekends as a paramedic in Natchitoches. I've worked around here in Bossier and other places. I really enjoy the clinical work. But I also love the teaching because uh, the students, my, our students challenge us. Mm -hmm. They've all got experience as EMTs, so they come with certain knowledge already. And so when we tell them something they don't understand, they're going to push us. <laughs> and so it's, it's good. It makes me a better paramedic, and I enjoy working with the students. And then what's really nice about my job mm -hmm. is I'm creating my own colleagues. So when my students graduate, we work together as, as paramedics. Some of my work as EMTs with and so uh, it, it's a nice tight community and uh, it's nice to be a part of helping people join the community mm -hmm. and then working with them for years. So like talking about the community you said that you're not just a paramedic here so you're at other places? Yes uh, I work clinically as a paramedic in Natchitoches right now for Natchitoches mm -hmm. Regional Medical Center. I've worked for Bossier Parish EMS mm -hmm. here in Bossier City, in Bossier Parish sorry. Um, I've never been a firefighter so I've never worked for like Bossier City Fire or Shreveport mm -hmm. Fire but I have a lot of friends that do. Uh, I started out my career at Jackson Parish Ambulance in Jonesboro. Oh. So uh, I've been around a few places. I'm originally from Ruston. So I, I, oh, really? I grew up over there, went to tech, went to paramedic school in West Monroe, and then I moved to Bossier to take the job at Bipsy in 2007. Oh, that's great. Okay, so what are your goals for the students that are in your class right now? Well, for, for me and uh, my coworker, Allison Nutt, our, our basic goal is for them to be a better paramedic than we are. We want them to be prepared for what they're going to see mm -hmm. now prepared for what's coming. Our field is very dynamic, mm -hmm. things change. And so new therapies get developed, new techniques, uh, new drugs. And so we have to stay current, which is a, a, lot of, a lot of my time is spent just making sure I know what I'm talking about because it does change. And then uh, we prepare the students for that. We, we do a lot of, a lot of our work is critical thinking. So it's not just having them learn facts about the diseases or whatever, we have to get them to use them. Okay. And so we run a lot of simulations. We have a lot of classroom discussion. Uh, it's a very active program. The students are doing all the time. So how did the pandemic affect all of that? Uh, it, was, it was interesting. We, yeah. we got cut out of our labs for a while, and we got cut out of our clinicals for a while. But because Bipsy has such good resources for delivering online education, 
we were able to convert our, our lecture part mm -hmm. into video and other instruction on Canvas. And so that was almost seamless. We were about a week where we didn't have a lot, a lot going on. And then after that, EMT and Paramedic just kept on going. That's and then good. once we were allowed to come back to campus, which we were allowed to come back to campus for labs in a restricted basis yeah. in the summer of 2020. So we only really lost about two months of lab time, which we were able to make up later. Yeah. So the class that was, was going on during the pandemic, they graduated on time. Okay, that's good, because I bet like that was hard, because most of that's like hands-on. It, yeah, for, it was. Yeah. And they were also working as EMTs during the pandemic, so their job load got harder, plus the class yeah. load. Uh, that class, they just did an amazing job uh, getting through, but they all finished on time. They've all passed. They're all working as paramedics out in the field now. I bet they're, that's a relief. <laughs> yeah, they're glad to be done. They are glad to be done. <laughs> so I heard that they, the EMTs have long hours. Can you tell us about the hours that you've worked in the past and how do those hours affect your daily life? It is different. It, it's, it's almost like a, it's a, it's a lifestyle, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, the most common shift that we work is 24 hours shift. Okay. And so some services, they schedule you for like a month. You know, you do a 24 here, do a 24 there. Mm -hmm. Other services have a set rotating schedule. Uh, like the fire departments have a rotating schedule where you know uh, what shift you're going to work, you know, forever pretty much as long as you stay on the mm -hmm. same shift. But you do miss things. You, you have to reschedule things. Like if you're going to work on a holiday, a lot of us figure out a way to celebrate the holiday on a different day so oh, that our yeah. families can be there. Uh, you definitely have to plan ahead. It, it does change things. But on the flip side, if, if you're working just a straight 24-hour schedule, you have days off that mm -hmm. other people don't have. So you can do your shopping at Walmart at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday when no one's there mm -hmm. as opposed to having to go after work at 6 when the whole place is full. So there's trade-offs. Okay, so do these long shifts like affect you raising family? You said about like the holidays and not being able to be like with your family. It does. It, you know, the whole family ends up being involved in it, that we all have to participate in making the decisions about what we're going to do. Uh, I miss time with my kids. I, you know, sometimes I have more time with my kids. We uh, homeschool, and so what's nice is uh, we were able to adjust some of our, the schedule based on my work schedule so I could be with my kids more. Okay, so we're going to... When we come back, we're going to take a break, and I want you to tell us a memorable story. I will. Hi, and welcome to Bosch Birch Community College's Sound Recording Technology Program. I'm Lewis Williams, and I'm one of the instructors in sound technology. Let's take a look at what we have. All the instructors in the sound program are industry professionals currently working in sound production, whether it be live sound, music performance, or sound recording. We have current and former students who are doing what they love, working in television, radio, recording studios, live sound, in places of worship, and in the movie industry. I am a non-traditional student, uh, and what brought me to school was spending a lot of time out in the private sector and learning how important specialized training can be. The reason I came to BIPC was because I spent a lot of time in the private sector, uh, in the music scene, and without a lot of guidance or direction, I just had a desire to create art and to, to be a part of the industry, and coming to school made the most sense because it allowed me to learn some of my bad habits and, um, and get rid of those and build good professional habits from the ground up. I feel like Bossier Parish Community College's sound recording program will help my career by teaching me the professional standard practices for recording audio, whether uh, for a commercial song for an artist or scoring a movie or doing Foley, understanding the, the need for organization and the correct process to get those things done, I, I think it'll be a big help for me in the professional world. Our hands-on approach to teaching sound technology, we feel, is the only true way to learn sound production. You cannot learn this technology from reading a book. Because of our approach, we utilize the most up-to-date recording and live sound equipment available for classroom instruction. So, if you want a career in sound recording, music production, live sound, or sound for film, Come see us here at Bossier Parish Community College and let us show you how to get started in this exciting industry. Welcome back to This is Fipsy. I'm Rose Carmody and we are with Jeff Anderson. And before the break, we were talking about the shifts and everything. And now we want to know a memorable story about a call you responded to. 
Well, I have lots of them. Uh, that's that's the, the fun part about being a paramedic, especially as long as I've been. There's lots of good stories, lots of bad stories, lots of intermediate stories. Uh, you have experiences with your with your coworkers, your patients, their families. Uh, it's just you get to see this really weird slice of life. Uh, but probably one of my favorite stories is kind of a silly one, actually. Um, when I was working in Jonesboro, uh, there was a, a gentleman that had rode on one of those motorized scooters, and he was in an apartment complex, and somebody had knocked him off his scooter, and we picked him up, took him to the hospital to get him checked out and everything, and we were just chatting about what happened after I'd taken care of his injuries. And he, uh, I said, well, what, what happened to you? Well, somebody pushed me off my scooter. And I said, did you know him? Do you know what, going on, what, was, what was going on with that? And he said, yeah, it was that Jeff Anderson. And without thinking, I don't know why I did it, but I said, I hate that guy. <laughs> and so we spent the half, half the transport talking about how horrible Jeff Anderson was. <laughs> And then we had to explain to the ER about how horrible he was. It was, it was pretty funny. I just don't know why. That stuck with me for years. Oh, gosh. Um, I, bet, I bet that's a story you'll never forget. No, probably not. I've heard that this job comes with some stress. Can you talk about more about that and how you handle it? It does. It, it can be very stressful. You go from times where you spend hours or maybe even an entire shift and never go anywhere, uh, especially in some of the rural areas. Uh, the call volume is not as big, but because we have to be strategically located throughout the parishes, we have slower stations. Mm -hmm. And so some of those days are actually the most stressful when you don't have any calls because you're, you're, you're waiting to go on a call. You're keyed up to go on the call, but then none come. Yeah. And so you have to find ways to entertain yourself without getting in too much trouble. And then other stations, you're so busy that you run the entire 24 hours and you get very little sleep. Um, we, we have most of our calls are not as stressful it's more routine stuff because but what's routine to us may not necessarily be routine to the patient yeah. you have to remember that's something I've seen a thousand times maybe they're experiencing it for the first time so it's stressful to them and so we have to kind of help them work through it and and get them to the care they need but then other times the calls can get pretty bad um, for me personally the stress has never been as big of a problem I think everybody kind of responds to it differently yeah. they handle that aspect of the career differently and uh, one of the things that really gets you in trouble if you're not able to get rid of the bad calls and, and move on and fortunately for me I did nothing to earn this but just fortunately for me uh, it's never been an issue of me retaining what happened that we've seen I've never had a nightmare about a call or anything but I have friends that have and uh, sometimes it gets to the point where you do need to get some professional help from a counselor to kind of work through the trauma because some of the things we see you shouldn't have to see but yeah, it's just part of our job <laughs> and so but there we have resources to help us um, fortunately we're getting to the point now where as a group we're more open to seeking help when we need it because mm -hmm. you know needing help with something like that is no different than needing help for a heart attack or diabetes you've got to you know you got to get help yeah. sometimes you need a professional and so uh, thankfully I've not experienced that yet but it may be the next call I run. You just never know. Yeah, and like with dealing all of that, like what do you, what advice do you give mm -hmm. like people wanting to come into the program? I, the biggest piece of advice I give our students is to have a life outside of EMS. Uh, one of the things I'm very fortunate about, I have a, a good family that supports me. We're, we're close, and so if things are bad at work, things can be good at home, and they help me uh, stay grounded and, and stay sane. <laughs> Uh, extended family too, have hobbies. Uh, fortunately, I have Bipsy also, so when things aren't going good on the ambulance, things can be going good at Bipsy or vice versa mm -hmm. uh, because I do teach also. And so th that's the biggest advice I have is don't make your entire life about being a paramedic. Have other things too so that when things are bad in one area of your life, they can be good in another area. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, sometimes people focus too much on just being a paramedic and that's all they have. And when that's yeah. not good, everything they have is bad. That's, I agree. But so if people want to come in, where can they contact you or what website can they go to? Well, just Google Bipsy Paramedic Program. Our actual okay. URL is kind of complicated, but just <laughs> Bipsy Paramedic Program. Uh, you'll find my contact information on there. Or if you just call the school and just call the school line and say you want to talk to the paramedic program, they'll route you to me and then okay. uh, we'll get you what you need. Perfect. And I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And. I just, I hope everyone that was watching got a good in-depth look as much as I did. Well, thank you all for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time on This is Bipsy.